In this video, I'm gonna share with you the number one mistake cyclists make in criterium racing. And look, whether you just do bunch rides, you're thinking about doing your first criterium, or you've been criterium racing for a number of years, I'm very confident that you'll get a lot of insight out of this video. Reason being, I'm joined by an ex-professional cyclist by the name of Tommy Nankervis, who after racing overseas for a number of years, moved back to Melbourne and became one of the most highly regarded criterium racers in this country. In fact, in the 2017-18 season, he won 25 A-grade criteriums. Now, season is about six months here in Australia, so the guy knows how to race a bike. Now, Tommy's pedigree in bike racing is a lot different to mine, which I think makes this a unique piece of content. You see, Tommy grew up on the track. He learned his trade in bike racing at a young age. Myself, on the other hand, I took up road cycling in my late 20s after I ditched triathlon and fell into criterium racing. And while I have made it to an A grade level, which is the equivalent to category one for all my US friends, I'm still making a lot of mistakes, including the number one mistake cyclists make in criterium racing, and that is wasting energy. Now I've told you the punchline, don't jump away because in this video what I've got for you is five examples where I've been wasting energy in an A grade criterium at Melbourne's illustrious Caulfield Carnegie Cycling Club's Glenvale. And we're not only gonna be pointing out the mistakes, we're gonna be discussing what I should have been doing differently. The solution, such as sitting on wheels, closing gaps, and we even discuss body position amongst the five examples. Now to set the scene at one of Australia's great cycling clubs, that's right, it's Caulfield Carnegie Cycling Club at Glenvale, this criterium race was about 10 or 11 months ago. All the data, the GoPro footage, and the conversation with Tommy was actually on a hard drive that exploded, but I've since salvaged the data and I can present this information to you. Now, Tommy didn't actually race at this particular Glenvale. What he did is he came around to my house after the race and we sat down in front of my GoPro footage that was sitting on my bike and Tommy gave me a lesson. Now, before we get into these five mistakes that I make and the solutions, I just wanted to point out there are probably other mistakes that people make. I'd be keen to hear your fuck ups in Criterium Racing below just so I don't feel so bad about sharing mine. But I think the only other major one outside of the five that we don't talk about in detail is wind conditions. And the reason being, which is surprising for Glenvale this particular day, it wasn't an overly windy day. So we don't spend much time talking about this particular topic. However, Tommy does give me a good slap or clip, virtual clip around the ears when he sees me rolling in different directions. Despite it being light wind conditions, it clearly doesn't matter. Now lastly, this entire discussion, which includes an intro and also my five major learnings that I whiteboard, is over on the roadcyclingacademy.com. It's a $49 AUD short course, which is called the A-grade criterium lesson, but for the first 10 people from this video in there, I've got a 50% off discount code. All the details I'll put in the below video description area. And lastly, before we get into the meat of this video, don't forget, I'm giving away a road bike. It's right behind me. It's called the Merida Skultura 4000 to a lucky subscriber a week before Christmas this year. So if you want to join that competition, don't forget to subscribe below and let's get into it. And you've got to get to fifty if you didn't take the corner at fifty. Yeah, okay. There's Warren Nevitt. You can always you can always trust him as a wheel to follow. Yeah. Oh, so I've so I've dropped. Ernie. Yeah. See, they kind of shafted you there because they made it look like they were going to take the wheel. Yeah, but is see, that my so that's, fault? Yeah, that's that's really bad mistake if you ask me. Yeah. Okay. See, look again. You've left yourself with you know another big gap. So it's, what, a, two, it's a two hundred when you're trying to wind them in like this. See now, like what are you looking at? You're around about probably. 200 meters now, 250, 300. You've just given yourself basically a half lap attack. Yeah. Is that really what you want to do if you're saving your energy? No. Look at this. See, and then someone has to go past you. Yeah. But then you've got nothing left. Yeah. So I've got to get back on the wheel. And you've got to surge while you're already gassed. Yeah. And then those guys are kind of letting you know that either you should have closed the gap a bit or... See, and look, he's still doing over 500 watts. So, yeah. you basically, that's three quarters of a lap near on. Yeah. And you still haven't got a sit. Now, you're only just getting a sit now. Well, they've all set up. Probably that's the reason yeah. why. So, obviously, there was a surge, but you've got a sprint to close the gap. Yeah. But that's three quarters of a lap 
And so in that um, situation that you just saw where you sort of they you sort of saw them they were looking like they might have gone in but they came out and then I was then I was the one closing the 200 meter gap and I did it really slowly. What would have you have done in that instance? Just sprint. I would have gassed it real hard. Yeah. And okay. If it looked like I wasn't going to get there, then I'd just flick my elbow and get the next person to come through. Yeah. Okay. Because you got to you. I mean, realistically, everyone that's behind you, they got to share that load to get back up. So you could probably each do like 150 meters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See how he's just launching it across? Yeah, so that's, that's the way what you should have done. Yeah, okay. Because if you go full gas, you're only doing it for, what, what's he done? Less than 10 seconds. You've still got no draft here. Yeah. He was on the wheel and he's got, you know, who, was that Dave Williams? Dave maybe? Williams, yeah. He He's already sitting in the wheels and then Matt McKim's drifting there and he's still closing the gap, you know, 15 seconds later. So, so for that type of move, do you, do you train that, or do you? No, nah, no, nah, I just nah. cop it. Like you at the start of the season, you just do it, and then yeah, okay. As the season rolls on, they become easier. They become easier. Yeah, yeah. okay. I don't mind if the person on the front wants to do it slow. It's much nicer. Yeah, but, but what, you do, you do, you do worry that if the first person, it's like, say, if you get there and you get halfway across, yeah, and then the second person's in the same situation and they get halfway across, yeah. You start to wonder, you're going, oh, damn, like, am I going to have to sprint and close this gap here or is it going to, you know, are they going to bring it back? You're kind of a little bit wary of it. Yeah. But in terms of fatigue, clearly a, a quick five-second sprint 20 times versus a 20-second effort 20 times, you're going to be fresher at the end. Oh, yeah, then you get to freewheel on the wheels. But yeah, probably if you wanted to quantify it like that, you could say that do the do the slow drag in, but you're still above threshold for both of them. So yeah, the thing Mick Hollingworth, who that's him on the left there in the fluoro, <laughs> yeah, he's a uh, Olympian, he went, he went, yep, Australian Olympian, Australian Olympian, club club champion, club champion, life member, done everything. He, I've known him that since the very first day I went down the track. You know, he's been there doing the lap counting on the track and all that, and yeah. Um, he, I was, I was always lazy. I still am. He used to say to me that when I go to close the gap, I'd just leave it too long and I'd do a big, long, slow, close the gap on the track. Yeah. And he's like, you got to slam it and just, you know, jam it, you know, close that gap as fast as you can so that you're sitting on the wheels, like basically recovering again. And he used to say it to me all the time and then I just started doing it and life was a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I still do it. That yeah. was something he taught me when I was, you know, 15 or 16. Interesting. Well, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, people would come in now with power meters and say, oh, you know, you did this and did that and you didn't need to do that surge at a thousand watts or whatever and I'd be like, Pff. I know it's easier, so I'll just do it. Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of things that people want like the scientific evidence for and then there's just some things that, you just Everyone's <laughs> listen to what the old dudes say because they know. Yeah, you know they didn't have to write a research paper on it. It's just, it's just the way it is. So what about these corners? So this one, maybe we'll talk about that one next because I've just gone through it. But like, how do you approach some of these corners? Like, let's just say this one coming up here. Mm. What do you? Is there any? Is there any specific technique or angle that you use, or you just follow the wheel? Oh, I just go as hard as I can. Just go as hard as you can. <laughs> the harder you take the corner, the less you have to accelerate when you come out here. Yeah, it's true. Depend where the wind's coming from for me. Yeah. It's actually kind of bothers me seeing how much power you have to do out of the corner because... You think I'm doing too much? Well, I just I'm... don't like to see my numbers. So. Right, okay. <laughs> so, this, this, is there a bit of technique for this corner up here? Like, how, how would you say um, this? Like, for me, I just, whatever happens, I don't want to lose momentum. Right. So some people talk about putting it in a in a lower gear and really sort of spinning up there. <clears throat> what do you think about that? Oh, for me, it's not long enough to have to worry about that. It's yeah, only a fifty okay. meter hill, right? I think that's uphill, and then it kind of pitches about here. Mm. That one you probably monitor, m manage your gearing a bit more than maybe the other one. Yeah, right. Interesting, because then you kind of come up, and then this is pretty flat and bogged down. It's pretty slow feeling straight. This one. So, so you got a fair bit of power on there for someone who's finished their turn. You know. Mm. I'd be nearly on. If you take that corner right, you could probably ride zero watts till there. Yeah, okay. So, what did I do wrong in that corner? Just too wide? No, well, you didn't do really do anything wrong, but I probably would have just freewheeled. Yeah, okay. Because then zero watts is better than 200. Right, right and just let the bunch pass you faster. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, you get, what are you trying to get back to about 20th wheel anyway? 
I'd just rather get there sooner and just be zero watts for a minute. How far do you sit off the wheel in front of you? Um, oh, it depends. I try and get as close as I can, but it really, it's, I think I definitely let it go too much, particularly coming out of that second corner. It's hard to, yeah, because with the camera, I don't know where the camera is, but because you, you can't see your front wheel, so. Yeah, I'm pretty close there. Like, you don't, you wouldn't want to get much closer. I know you get, you try and get as close as possible. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, what, what impact does it have being as close as possible? Oh, versus more draft. Yeah, but is it like so at the end of a race, how much are you going to save? Save a few percent? Oh, I've got no idea. I wouldn't experiment with how hard it is to go further back. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just but asking. You, like, just asking. But how, how close you want to get in a crit though? Because crits, you know, they're a bit. Oh, a foot. Yeah. Okay. Because I do everything imperial, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Half a wheel, I suppose. But I think particularly in the lower grades, though, riders are probably a bit reluctant to get really close on people's wheels, aren't they? Yeah, but you'd like to think you can trust everyone in A grade. Yeah. They should, they should be there for a reason. Well, you know, you've got the 40 of the best riders in Melbourne here, so... Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the challenges that I have. I can ride close, but then, you know, there'll be a surge or something or, you know, a rider looks like they're going to pop in, so maybe like there, for example. Yeah, see, it looks like you're a whole bike length there. Yeah. and then, Which, if you knew you were going to pick up speed around the corner, like jam it on and then come onto the wheel, then that's good, but... Yeah, okay. But, yeah, so what I was saying... So you're going pretty fast this lap. But see, you did too long a turn back there. Yeah, I know. And now you're in the second wheel again. Yeah, I know. But see, the danger here is you can't just get to the wheels and then want to sit up. Like, you've got to, even if you're about to be the guy that's going to be in fifth wheel there, so that's a pretty long turn again, but then you're getting past. But the guy who's coming through on your wheel, if he slots into fifth wheel, he's got to be ready to do the turn when his turn comes up. Yep. So if that's you and then you're too cooked when it's your turn... You should have peeled off before then. Yeah. See, bent, elbows, tucked yeah. down. Five-second turn, head down. perfect. Yeah, okay. If you don't want to help, fine, we'll go back to the bunch and I'll hopefully have a bunch sprint that if you're not a sprinter, you're probably not going to get top 20. You know, what, what are people down here for? To get a result or to get a workout? If they want a workout, chase. Yeah. If you want a chance to win, chase. <laughs> if you want to sit in the bunch and not do anything, you may as well have stayed home. Yeah. Save your entry fee and <laughs> go, go for a ride down Beach Road and do a couple of Insta photos and yeah, you know, do a Strava and tell everyone how awesome you are. And <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be aero at all if you're tucked in the wheels properly. True, That's what I always say yeah, all okay. these all these new positions, everyone goes like really low in the front end and put all their weight forward and all their. All their load is on their quads instead of on their glutes and hammies and all their bike handling goes out the window and it's funny because you watch guys that, you, the way you can tell is the guys that are on their hoods and their arms are, are locked straight instead mm. of being bent. Yep. It means their front end's too low. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so, how do you how do you sit on the bike then? Oh, just like a champion. <laughs> just like a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got no idea. Just how it feels right. How it feels but, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Look at all the old dudes. They're all they got... They don't have their handlebars up higher because they don't have as much flexibility. They got their hands up higher because they've got a balanced position that's got more control. Because mm. really, like if you, you see Walker there, he's on the wheels. Yep. You can't... Obviously, you, you got, you're going to... Bit of a fisheye lens, so it's never going to be reflective of from behind there. But he's got a bit of a bend while he's down in his drops. Yep. But what's it? What's the aerodynamics matter to him when he's tucked in on the wheel? Like you know, he's probably ten centimeters off the wheel in front of him. What's the aerodynamics matter there? Yep. Doesn't matter at all. Yeah. You could be in a pair of board shorts and you'd still be getting a draft. What about when you hit the front there? So he's hit the front. Yeah. See, bent elbows, yep. tucked down, five head, second head turn, down. perfect. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the head down just for he's looking through his legs to see where you are. Yeah. Okay. That's why he's doing that. So you're going wide around there again? Are you yeah. hoping they pass you on the left or right? You've got to have thought for what the dudes are doing behind. Yep. See, last time you let them pass on the right, this time the left. Why, mm. why are different? Mm. That would be probably not concentrating. 